Hi scrapbookers, it's Katie Scott and today I am working on the story of Jack and how he died and it is a sad story and he was the husband of Charlotte or Belle as she was known and I didn't have any pictures so I go through and tell you how I found these pictures and what they are and how I found the obituary and um, and the whole story of Jack and I also in this video go through and show you some of the ways that I keep my old family memorabilia and also um, old photos but also stuff so I go on a tangent somewhere in the middle <laughs> but managed to get the page done so the that is the third set of great great grandparents um, we're just checking our way through we, there's gonna be eight sets or 16 all together so I think um, this was five and six, so we're almost halfway there. Let's start. Hey, scrapbookers, I'm back, and we're gonna be making another layout in the great great grandparents' heritage scrapbook family history extravaganza. So, I've gone through and done my grandfather's four grandparents, and now we're gonna be working on my father's mother, my nana, or grandmother's four grandparents. I finished Charlotte, and now we're going to move on to Jack. And so Jack and Charlotte, um, or Jack and Belle, were born here in Canada. And then the other set of this side of the family, they were immigrants. So they were all about, I guess these folks are yeah, like a little bit younger than these folks. That <laughs> just works out generation-wise. Um, so the information about the settlement where they lived is going to be mainly on these two pages. And then this page about Jack or John Henry Jack Grieve is going to be about his death. So I found this on um, Find a Grave. So it's findagrave.com. You can just put in your ancestor's name. And some of them have a lot of information. Mine do in particular because my cousin wrote a lot of it. So um, this was from the newspaper obituary in 1925. John Henry Grieve, who was injured at Harvey a few days ago, died as a result. Um, he passed away Saturday night in the Victoria Hospital in this city at the age of 70 years. Death was a result of injuries received several days ago. Mr. Grieve was driving a team of horses which he touched one with a stick which he was carrying to increase the speed. The horse kicked and drove the stick against the driver's abdomen causing internal injuries. Mr. Grieve is survived by his widow, Charlotte, we already, we've met her, <laughs> uh, and his two sons, Frederick and Oswald. And Frederick is my first great-grandfather. Um, both of Harvey, also by two daughters, Mrs. Walter Hood and Mrs. Roy McMullen of Prince William Station. Other surviving re relatives are three brothers, Thomas Grieve of Harvey, George and Joseph Grieve of British Columbia. He is also survived by one sister, Mrs. Thomas Wilson. There are 15 grandchildren. The body was taken to Harvey today. And, yeah. And it also tells who his parents are, Patrick Turnbull Grieve and Mary Piercy Grieve. And I have been trying to find pictures of Jack and Charlotte, but have not been able to yet. So there is a group on Facebook that I'm a member of called Old Harvey Photos. And if you're looking for some of your ancestors, you might want to look on Facebook, not only for your surname, but for the place where they lived, because you might be surprised as to what you find, but I, so I don't have a picture of Jack that I know of. I mean, I might in my dad's records, there's a lot of them. I'll have to look, um, and I might find them, but I did find this picture of Harvey, and there are cows in that picture, and then this is also a picture from Harvey, so he could be in this picture, but I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so there, it looks like they're gathering hay on a wagon, and there's a horse in the front, so those are the pictures that I'm going to use. I also pulled um, my Jenny Bolin supply kit and then my Jenny Bolin scraps. So those are some of the supplies that I expect to be using on this layout. And I've already gotten the title on. 
So it's just a matter of kind of deciding where the pictures are going to go and what the embellishments are going to be and going from there. Okay, so I'm back and I don't really have a plan yet, so let's just start to play around. And I have this text that I know I want to um, include. How about like something like this? I'm feeling like a lot of the pages have been pretty busy, so maybe this is a little bit less busy. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so I already have his name and his date of birth and death. And then I've got all these pages that I've printed out that I don't think I'm going to use. I really, um, there's two subscriptions I really want right now. And one is um, the International Ancestry. And the other is um, newspapers.com. And... I kind of feel like both of them are like way too expensive. <laughs> so I've been trying to just uh, use what I can use for free online. And actually, um, while I was uploading the first part of that, um, the first part of this video is I went on Facebook and somebody had posted some of those things on Facebook. So. Maybe if I just kind of <laughs> put my, you know, put the word out, maybe, um, maybe my distant cousins will fill in my gaps. So, and they really are, like, it's really quite interesting to see that, like, the, the people, um, on Facebook really, are, like, somebody will post their name and then I'll say, oh, your name looks familiar. Um, you know, the last name of it looks familiar. Are we cousins? And the person will write back and be like, oh yeah, I used to communicate with your dad all the time about um, family history. So, even though I don't know a lot of these people, my dad knew a lot of them, or at least through correspondence, he was corresponding with them very interesting. It's a small world after all, right? Like we are all cousins. <laughs> okay, there's a picture of the cemetery where he's buried, so I feel like that's appropriate. And let's just get some of the stuff out of the way. So I've been watching some process videos and everybody keeps their desk so nice and tidy. And I like to get my desk nice and tidy, like, every once in a while. But, you know, while I'm working on projects, I like the desk to be pretty messy. And <laughs> the cat is definitely, like, messing with my whole world order. Because before I had a cat, I could just, you know, put things on my desk and nothing would move. And now, not so much. So I'm thinking, here are some photos of Harvey. And then maybe Jack, his name will go up here. And now I want to see how to, and I'm thinking I'm probably going to um, mat those photos with some pattern paper. Although I think I could skip that. Stop. Stop, kitty, stop. <laughs> She's getting ready to jump over here. It's, it's, um. I've gotten comments that it's annoying, and I've also gotten comments that you don't mind. So, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't particularly love it, but I also, there's not a ton I can do about it except put her in a cage. So, yeah, somebody says, don't put her in a cage. Okay, so there's from the newspaper obituary. So, I think what I will do is just, um... I'm going to cut this out and have it like just be the little strips. So I'll show you how it's going to go. I'm going to cut it by hand and then this just ends up taking a little while. So I just use a glue stick, which means that I won't be able to change things around. 
but I'm okay with that. So I will just um, fill it in this way and I'm going to kind of try to keep it in this um, this space right here. So it'll be pretty tight, but by cutting it apart, it kind of gives it a little bit less weight, which I like the look of. Okay, so I'm gonna do that off camera. If I had, if I knew how to speed things up, I would speed it up so you could see me doing it, but I just think it, um, it kind of lasts too long. So I am trying to, I like to do my videos in real time, but I'm trying to shave down a little bit of time. So, just so that they're, you know, they're still a little bit longer probably, but maybe for the people who aren't so thrilled about the long videos, because I know, I think there's more people like that. <laughs> um, but, so I'm, I'm trying to um, make them slightly shorter. Okay, so I'll be back. And I'm back, and I've got that, um, all of that down. And what I noticed was that the obituary is from 1925, but I had his death as 1918. So this exercise of doing the scrapbook is really great because on the in-between sections, which you're not seeing, um, but I might be able to do some screen casting where I show you what I'm doing in Ancestry or, you know, on the web. So I can kind of show you where I'm getting all this information, but that might be for another series. Um, <laughs> but I, so I corrected, I just picked up those two last um, letter sticker or number stickers and corrected the date. So, and then I also corrected it online in my family tree so that, um, yeah, so it's all, you know, correct. So I'm, I've found these photos and I kind of like them actually unframed, um, but I think I might want to, I like them unmatted, but I think I could also like them matted. And I think I want to add one more photo. So the one more photo is going to be a Victoria hospital because that um, is where he went after the accident and so yeah let's just look so I'm gonna get online and print that and then the other thing is I just kind of wanted to keep looking back at her page so there is some green on her page so I think I'll mat some of these photos because you know it was out in the field <laughs> he was a farmer so I feel like I need to bring some green in um, and I'll do that in the form of photo mat. So I'm going to go ahead and map those photos. And I'm going to grab one more photo from the internet. And that will be of Victoria Church. Or Victoria Hospital. Which is near where they lived in Harvey, New Brunswick. Yeah. And then the, the only embellishment that I think I want to use is... I know there's a horse in here. <laughs> and so the horse was his cause of death. Because he was driving a team of horses when he touched one with a stick, which he was carrying to increase the speed. The horse kicked and drove the stick against the driver's abdomen, causing internal injuries. So, that was a bad day. <laughs> yeah, killed by a horse. What's, what's also so funny is I love uh, my... When I was a little girl, like my... Um, yeah, I think that could be... So I think we might just put this horse here. I could also, I'm lucky enough to have it both ways. So I could put it like that, but I kind of think I like, I like it like this, I think. I've also got this little horse, which is nice because it's printed on both sides. Isn't that cool? I think that's just like Kay and Company from, uh, from, so that might go maybe up here, right? Just to kind of um, bring in a little some embellishments. 
And so since I put down two, let's just see if I can find one more thing that's going to have, I think I have like a little, I thought I had it out the other day. It was like, um, yeah, here it is. We have no agents and it's just this little horse-drawn carriage pitcher. So that could be, we could add that. This doesn't go both ways. I think they should all be required to do that. That's a great idea. Um, maybe something like this. So just bringing together that some embellishments that have to do with horses. Because then you'd kind of look and go, well, why are all these horses on this page? And then, let's see what else. Then I also have, okay, this is, um, this must be from the same line as that card on the, on her page. I'm just wondering if I can bring in some of those flowers from the other page. I should really have that open the whole time. There, this wasn't actually the horse I was looking for. There's a horse, but we're not going to use that one. I thought the horse I was looking for was like an entire, yeah, an entire horse like this. I kind of like that better than this one. <laughs> just beating the dead horse. <laughs> you know, like, it might be just a little overkill with all of the horses, but let's, like, overkill, get it? Haha, <laughs> because he's dead. It's not funny. <laughs> it's a little funny. I was originally thinking it was going to be like this. So I don't know. We might be able to do something like this and then with the other photo in there. So just a little bit of play. It's a lot of horses on one page, isn't it? I feel like I liked this horse down here. I did. All right, well, yeah, lots of moving around of horses. Oh, how I loved horses when I was young. I did. I was obsessed with horses. Um, okay, so let me get that other photo printed, and then I will be back. And I might, while I'm gone, I might map these photos as well. And just um, some, some of these papers that I just have um, here on my desk that I think I showed you one or two videos ago. So I pulled a bunch of papers from, like, the Maggie Holmes and Crepe Paper lines. And I know there's some green in there somewhere. So I'm going to mat the photos with just a very thin little mat just to bring in some of that color. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And I probably, okay, I printed out four photos. This is Sir Henry, and that's, or Sir Harvey, and that's who um, the settlement was named after. And then I printed two different photos of the hospital. So this is like an older one, and then this is with the addition. And then I also printed out uh, the memorial that kind of describes the the emigrant with an A ships. I don't know what the difference is. Um, I should look that up from Berwick. And so that um, also tells about a second party went out in the Cornelius de Sunderland in 1837 and founded Harvey, New Brunswick. And so that's definitely something I want to have on the, the other um, folks who actually made the voyage. But this page is going to be all about the death. So it's, I think the thing is, is like, it's lucky to just even have one story about an ancestor. So there's more stories I could tell about John, Jack, Henry, grief. <laughs> but I'm just going to stick with the obituary story because that's the most exciting to me. Um... And, you know, that's the one that I have a story all written up that I didn't even have to write. So that's pretty clever. 
Uh, okay. So now I'm just cutting out the postcards. And these are the kind of thing where they may or may not be copyrighted. So, you know, word of warning, if you're just printing things off the internet, um, you may want to... And, and oh, that's with all these images, like, and I think for a personal scrapbook, um, I guess they could sue me, <laughs> but they probably won't. I hope they won't. <laughs> um, and I, you know, it is here, but it's really becoming part of my art. So I think it's like using a Coca-Cola can in your... Um, you know, your artwork. I should probably look that up, but I'm not exceptionally worried about it. So there's, there's the hospital photos. And you can move this one down in here. So this is kind of a little bit different than I had originally envisioned the page. And then here's the cemetery. I'm just trying to See how all these can fit in together. So it's really just a matter of, you know, if I was a digital scrapbooker, I could probably do a lot more with um, placement and sizes. And I could, you know, I could have really planned this out a little bit more, but. If you, so I'm like, you know, not so plannery. When I take a vacation, it's usually because I've made up my mind to do it, you know, the day before. And so I'm a genealogist, you know, I'm an amateur genealogist who's not really that into details. And so I think, you know, my dad was really a genealogist who was super into details. My cousin, I think, is. She's the one who um, wrote this up on the uh, find a grave, but I'm really not, and you know, I, I almost want to apologize for it, but then I almost don't want to apologize for it, because that's just me, I'm not, I'm not very detail oriented, and you know, there's good and bad that goes along with that, I was talking with somebody about yeah, you, I, I don't know if you, if you listen to my other, um, my, the one about Charlotte, I think I mentioned that I had to go to a cocktail party. So at the cocktail party, we were kind of talking, we all talking, you know, it's a bunch of women. <laughs> it was a girls night out kind of thing. So we were all, and you know, what you end up talking about is your kids, right? So we were talking about our kids, <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's what we talk about, right? Um... And how, you know, whether the kid is, like, naturally organized or not. And I was saying how I really wasn't. And um, how that hasn't kept me from achieving things in life. I just have to adapt. So, like, at my law office, I have to be, I'm almost like, you know, if you knew me in there, you would think that I was, like, hyper, hyper organized, which I'm not. But I have to be in there because you can't, you know, you got to be, everybody has to know where things are. And, you know, everything has to be precise and correct. I think I'm not going to do all those. Um, so I'm wondering if I want to do all of the matting of the photos are not. And so I'm a little bit on the fence. I kind of like this, this arrangement here. Because this really, I like that. I like this. Okay, if we're gonna do, oh, and then where does Jack go? There's Jack. We'll go right over this. So if we're going to do it like this and going to have um, mats, they've got to be exceptionally small mats. So I'm not going to use these horses. These horses will go back into my little um, book that where I keep all this sort of thing. 
And I just put a little bit of um, adhesive so I can find them in this little book. I really love this, this plan because I also keep embellishments in little bins like this, but I don't use them as often as I do with the little book. So I've got them stored in both ways. I like the book better. All right, let's just talk through the rest of this because I'm a talkative gal, <laughs> kind of, sometimes. Um, yeah, so we were just talking about how difficult it is, seriously, to be a mother of middle school children. I will say, for the record, it was really hard when my kids were tiny, but emotionally it was much easier. It is hard. <laughs> it's hard. I'm going to take this out of the book. I haven't photographed any of these yet, and so what I think because, um, yeah, just because of the disorganized freak that I am, <laughs> I'm not, but, um, I think I will photograph these all at once at the end because I think that's the boring part and then I'll post them up on my blog so there will be in the future um, there will be all of these will go up onto the blog but not immediately yeah so I the reason I want to to mat those photos is because I matted the photos on her side of the page so they should be I want them to be like harmonious, you know. So let's just start sticking things down and also matting. So I'll try to just talk through all that. So how about this one first? And I didn't even get into this Jenny Bowling stuff. I want to. Yes, I do. Okay. All right, let's see this one first. So it took me a long time to um, embrace the tiny mat <laughs> because for a long time I just really wanted that pattern paper to show through, but I found um, that I really like the look of a tiny little mat. And the person that I really learned that I think the most from is Celeste Smith. And she she's a, was a paper scrapbooker and is now a digital scrapbooker. And she just does a really beautiful job of layering paper, but having them in such a way that the it can be just such a tiny, like, one-eighth of an inch um, border. So uh, that's something I learned from her. I learned a lot from her. I've been following Celeste since... Um, she was designing for Simple Scrapbooks, the magazine, and she is pretty brilliant. You're brilliant, Celeste. I'm a big fan. She's also, every single year, the, um, and Debbie Hodge just talked about this on the Paper Clipping Roundtable. Um, so in March every year, there's a free event at Get It Scrapped called Calvin Ball. And it was created by Dora Sander, Paula Gilardi, and Celeste Smith. And then Celeste is the kind of the leader of it right now. And Doris. Um, and I'm not sure Paula is still scrapbooking or not. She used to be on the pages of Simple Scrapbooks a lot, too. Anyways, um, Celeste always wins. <laughs> I used to have delusions that I could beat her. There is no way. Especially now that she's um, digital scrapbooking. It's, um, no. Like, she <laughs> seriously, I think she does. I don't know. Oh, I gotta stop. Hold on. I'm back. Um, I think she does something like, I don't even know, like a million pages a day. Right? That's probably accurate. <laughs> No, it's, it's uh, probably something more like, I don't know, a lot. It's a lot. It's a crazy lot. It's a crazy lot of photos. But I think what she does beforehand is she sets herself up little folders and in her digital files. 
And then she knows, like, she doesn't have to make decisions about what am I going to scrapbook next when we're doing this speed scrapbooking event. She just goes to the next thing that she's pre-prepared for herself. So I tried to do that in paper. And there is, I have a folder for that. And there's a, there's a YouTube video for that as well. So if you, oops, that's, that's too large. Seems like too large. That's too small. Let's see. Let's see if we can fit it like this. Uh, I liked it better the other way, but I feel like with this border, you're really not. It's too large now. Grr. Still do like it like that better. This feels like it needs to move up just a little bit. Yeah, let's let's keep it like that. If I can. So I do think um, this type of a project would be hard to do in Calvin Ball just because I really do want to get everything accurate, you know, and I'm having to go back and look at Ancestry and then I get lost in the abyss of family history, you know, all of the genealogy part of this and it's a lot. It's um. I'm going to bring in some yellow there. There, you know, genealogy is a lot of fun. I don't mean to discount, like, the funness of it. But it is super time consuming. So if you're trying to do things faster, um, <laughs> genealogy, scrapbooking might not be the way to go. Because even though you can get the... The page is done, you know, as fast as, however fast you can get a page done. Um, the research part of this, unless you already have it all done, is going to take you extra time. So just to let you know kind of where I was, just because I'm talking while I'm doing all this, and I want to entertain you. <laughs> um, but I spent, so my, okay, back to the beginning. In the 50s, my, um in the 1950s. My grandfather, Frank, was the Fenderson. You know, you met Howard, his grandfather. But, um, so Frank was really into genealogy back in the 50s, and then my dad kind of picked up the torch um, from the 80s until when he died in 2002. And so the technology really wasn't like it is now. Um, there's so much more out there now. Okay, we need a green border. Like this color green over here. Um, so I've kind of watched the two of them do the genealogy thing, and it seemed exceptionally boring. You know, they would tell me about it from time to time, but I wasn't really interested. Um, I was mildly interested, I guess, because I would keep saying, well, tell me a story about... Like, my dad would just give me these huge, like, computer paper, you know, with the... Remember how the paper used to have, like, the... Oh, I just realized my dryer's on, and you can probably hear that. I'm so sorry. Okay, hold on. This is the green that I wanted to map that with. Okay. I have to pause. I'm going to turn the dryer off. Sorry about that dryer. I bet this is much better. I hope it is. <sighs> um, so... Anyways, my dad died when, so he was doing the family genealogy, and he was really, you know, he is a very detail-oriented guy, so he was super concerned with gathering as many ancestors as possible and getting them all into the family tree. Um, fortunately, they both did ask for photos, so I think we do, you know, have more photos than we would have if they hadn't have been doing that, but they didn't always label the photos 
and or they might have gotten them and not been labeled or they didn't label them. Although you want to know something crazy? You know, if you've been watching my series, do you remember um do you remember this? This is like shocking to me. Okay, remember Annie Fleming Fenderson, the one who died um after her little daughter was born like she died 10 days after her daughter her three-day-old daughter was born. She died 10 days after her three-day-old daughter died and left Charles, my great-grandfather, who was only five, and then his sister, her sister, drew this drawing, and then I found this photo online. You want to know something crazy? I just found it. Like, we actually did have it. Watch. I, hold on. Okay, I'm back. So you can kind of see the disorganization starting because I think... My son has ADHD. This is my first point and has, you know, a lot going on in his brain. And I'm like, I think he probably got that ADHD from somewhere, you know, could be my son, could be. <laughs> Anyways, I have one idea and then I, it goes, you know, more and more and more ideas. <sighs> yeah. So it, it's a, it's a struggle for me to be organized, but I really try. And so I don't think genealogy is necessarily suited to my personality, but I think that um, you can be somebody who's not detail-oriented and still do genealogy, and it's fine. And, and like, my original, original point was, even though I got that date wrong down here on Henry, I corrected it. So just because you're not super detail-oriented, just because you don't have all the information, just because some of the information you have might be wrong. Don't let that stop you if you do have an interest in this. Because you can fix it. It's not a big deal, really. But what is the big deal is the original stuff. So I keep the original stuff in, and I try to keep the stuff that came together, together. So when my dad died, after a long story, um, with an evil stepmother, it's a whole fairy tale that ends badly. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I did get the um, family history stuff and so she, it was just sent to me in like these 13 huge boxes and I try to keep the things together so like I have this picture I don't know that could be Howard you know because he's from Callis and it was about that time um I'm just noticing it kind of has a a name on the back of it but it doesn't look like Fenderson it looks like P.M. Pennington so, like, he could have gone over here, but I don't know for sure who that is. But that's the other thing is, you'll look at all, if you've got the old stuff, you can look at it, and, you know, you know what you know when you look at it. And then five years later, you can look at it, and you know more stuff, perhaps, because you've been doing genealogy research. And then you'll be like, oh, now I know who that is. And that's happened quite a bit for me, um... And yeah, I didn't think we had this picture, so I bought it on Etsy. So there must have been more than one that was made. I don't think it's in this little box. But this, but so I know this little box of stuff is all from Fenderson's, or, you know, from my dad's line. So I try to keep the stuff that came from my mother's side separate from my dad's side, just because it's going to be easier to keep track of all that stuff. Um, I know plastic is not the best way to store your historical papers because, this is why, because if liquid gets in here, then it's going to eat away all your stuff. But I have this, like, right in my room. It's not in, um, it's in a closet in my room. It's not in an attic, so if it got, <laughs> you know, if there became water in it, I would know about it. There's also this picture, which I want to know where that house is. I need to post that on that old Harvey photos to see if this was a heart, you know, a house in Harvey. So that's something that I can do. Like I'll do it right now. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my iPhone out. I'm going to take a photo of this. Ta-da. And now I can just go to Facebook and my daughter has a friend here. Go to old Harvey photos and then I'm gonna post the photo. Let's see. 
that work? Oops. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna take another picture just because um, I think that one is going to turn out to not be right side up. So there we go. And now I will use that and say, does any anyone recognize? This photo could be Harvey or Callis Main question mark. And then that's um, so then maybe like you don't always know everything, but you can find help and see it. Here's this, like, this is a cousin of mine. She's posted a bunch of newspaper articles. And so I posted this scrapbook page that um, I was like, does anybody recognize any of these ladies? And no one's responded yet, but at least I'm getting that conversation going. Um, here's another picture that she just recently posted because I said, does anyone have pictures of my great-grandparents? And I listed their names, and these aren't my great-grandparents, but they're like, the some of the brothers and sisters that went out west like how fancy are they you know and so it, it, like it's interesting to see like they're all wearing furs it's very fancy um yeah so another isabella grieve so not the same isabella grieve as this one a lot of them have like the same names just because they all came over there are 22 families on that one you know the one or two boats and then everybody started to marry each other. What's my point? <laughs> yeah, that's where. But so I keep, I try to keep all of this stuff as it came to me so that I just took it all out and looked at it again and I showed my son. So sometimes it's, um, if you've gone through the, the stack of old photos that you don't know what this is before, um, you can look through them again and then different things are going, so you don't have to, you know, get everything into a scrapbook. Like, I think keeping the stuff in the boxes is actually more helpful because you can keep them as they came to you. And then the way that they're kind of put together is going to tell you more information. So, like, there's a, that's a super old one. That's Howard's father, I think, William Penn Fenderson. Um, but then, look what I found in my dad's handwriting, right? There's my dad's handwriting. Annie Fleming Fenderson. So that was, this is Annie, remember? And then this is the, the photo that I bought online. And then this is, it's like on a, I think it must be a tintype. This is the actual photo. Oh, I don't think you can see that, but he had it and he didn't know if that was Annie Fen Fleming Fenderson, but when I bought it online, it was labeled. So now, even though I bought it and we already had it, I didn't know we already had it, but I was able to, it came with the name. So isn't that fabulous? It's fabulous, but I'm just going to keep this original photo in the envelope that my dad had you know, with his handwriting and then put it back into this stack of stuff that I got from his side of the family. So there are unidentified people in here that I think that I will be able to identify. So here's a, here's one here. Um, this was taken by Pearson was the photographer in Callis, Maine. And here's a lady. Now, I don't, I'm not sure who she is, but I betcha I can figure it out. You know, like, at some point, we'll figure out who that is. Yep, it will be possible. I know it's not Annie Fleming, because she died when she was 27. But, you know, you just kind of, like, learn more information, and then go back and look at your stuff, and then learn more information. Here's another one that I really think... It's possible that these are people from Harvey. Let's see. Nope, that's a Fenderson. But this one here, I don't know. It, 
It's there's snow, so it might be. These are Fendersons. But so I just don't know everything. And so I just, you know, take a little, take what I know and then um, just go with that. And the thing is, is that you can get, or I could, you know, it's so easy to get overwhelmed if you have a lot of information. It's also easy to get overwhelmed if you don't have any information. Um, it just is. You just have to focus on, just tell what you can. Just tell one story at a time. Like... It's, and, and for some people, like me, who's, I'm real all or nothing, you know, um, it's kind of hard to do it a little bit at a time, but when I make these projects for myself, then it feels like I'm all in with the 16 grandparents, or 16 great-great-grandparents, so it's a way, if you can just reframe how you're thinking about all this, sometimes you can just get past your own personal blocks in the family history, if you're, if you want to, so if you, um, you know, you can spend a million hours or just a little bit of time. It's like, it's all up to you, really. The other thing I wanted to show you was a box. So I have boxes full of memorabilia, but I also have boxes full of stuff. So this is like some amethyst crystal, and this is actually silver that my dad had in his house. And I could have it on display in my house, but I kind of want to... We have other amethyst, and I just don't want to mix it up. My son's really into amethyst. And so, isn't that what this is? Yeah, amethyst. I don't want to get this mixed up because this is, like, my dad held this. I don't, I just, um, I want to keep it with his other things. So the other, and I brought this box out yesterday, and my son and I went through it, and I showed him, like, all the stuff. So my dad was a collector of things. These are like little shells that he got up in on a red beach in Maine where we lived. And then these this is a this is a rock with a fossil. Can you see the fossils of where and, and these were things that he had through his childhood. And so because we knew he was dying, he came down once. Um, when my son was a baby, this is an arrowhead that my grandfather Frank found in Maine. Look at this. Ta-da. Isn't that cool? Um, and so he gave me a bunch of, like, family heirlooms. This was before, <laughs> this is before those 13 boxes. But I'll tell you, when I got those 13 boxes, um, it was when my daughter was, like, six months old. My son was two and had ADHD and I, there was no way I was even going to open. Like we kind of opened the boxes, peeked into them, put them in a storage cabinet and then left them there for years and years. And so then maybe about five years ago, I kind of took everything out of boxes and put them into file cabinets and other boxes, you know, like not like shipping boxes, but like those smaller boxes that I just showed you. And so I'm just kind of you know, starting the tip of the iceberg. Then we've got all of these old coins and more arrowheads and fossils. But at, when my dad was here, I had him actually, so he signed his name. And then of all the things he gave in this box, I had, like, I wrote down what they were and where they came from. So, like, the 1848 coins... Um, my Nana found in her in her garden and so a lot of them are like they're old from New Brunswick and I almost want to include them in this scrapbook but then I get, then I'm like I'm not those are all pennies let me find let me find the New Brunswick ones but then I kind of want to keep them together so if I I think that if I wanted to include them in the scrapbook I would either take a scan of them or, yeah, see, here's one. Let me show you this one. There's like a whole mess of them. Can you see? Hold on. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's hard for me to tell if that is in focus. Uh, <laughs> okay, that looks like it's in focus. So that's 1848. And this is, um, oh, this is United States. But there are some New Brunswick ones in here as well. This is 1823 from 
province of Nova Scotia. So let me see if I can get this in focus for you. I don't know if you can... There you go. So all these old coins would be cool to either photograph and then put into this album. But I don't think I would actually put the original ones in. So granted, these could definitely be displayed in my house in a more attractive box. But it's just what's working for me now. Let me just make sure I get that piece of paper. So the piece of paper describing everything is on the bottom. And then, you know, I've just labeled it. So just Bob Fenderson's Rocks and Coins. And, yeah, so this, you know, it, it just doesn't get messed up with all the millions of other things we have in the house. Because, like, right now we're getting ready to do a yard sale. And this would be something I would not want to get into the yard sale by accident. So, that's how I store it for now. It'll, I, I, I would love, and I do have some at my office, like some bookshelves that are like glassed in so they don't get um, dust. I could envision um, maybe putting all of that stuff in there. I don't know. But right now it's in here. So there you go. I promise we're getting back to scrapbooking. But I guess I would just say like from time to time, you know, just take, if you have old family photos and heirlooms, just take them out and like show your kids and just explain to them like this is this and this is this and this came from there and that while you're doing that you will um you'll just naturally you'll make discoveries that you're like oh when I looked at that before I didn't realize that but now I know that that's so interesting <laughs> so yeah the story can like kind of change even now because you can learn more information, you can get in touch with those distant cousins, and really fill in gaps. It's very, very exciting times, it is, with social media and, and family history and the DNA stuff. I mean, it's just like, I wish my dad could come back to life for a little while so I could be like, look at all this stuff. <laughs> it's so, you know, so exciting. Or like, I wish I could talk to John and be like, hey, how did that feel when the horse like kicked you in the gut? <laughs> or sorry about that. And I probably loved horses, but that wasn't why. So now I've got the two, uh, I've got the same kind of embellishments from both on both pages. And now I want to add the Jack to his page. And I thought I was gonna put it up here but now that I'm doing this, I kind of think maybe I would like it down here a little bit better. See if I can move this little horsey up just a little bit. And then maybe Jack goes oh, maybe down here. Jack is going to go, yeah, down this way. And then I would like to add a little bit of sparkle to this page because there's no sparkle on that page yet. So I know I go, <laughs> my brain goes all over the place. Yeah, I probably, I probably am undiagnosed ADHD, I want to guess. But I've lived my whole life that way. <laughs> and I think my dad probably was too, but maybe he was, actually I don't think he was. He was quite methodical about things, but maybe that was a big overcompensation, you never know. Who knows? Anyways, I just, my point is, no matter what kind of brain you have, whether it's organized or not organized, you can do this genealogy stuff nowadays because it is hyper easy. Like, even I can do it. Like, I wasn't, you know, I would look at what my dad and my grandfather were doing so methodically back in the 50s and even in the 80s and early 2000s, and it was quite methodical. I would not be capable of genealogy <laughs> under those circumstances, but I am now. So if you're like, I don't have any information, or I don't know any information, I didn't know any of this. I mean, I did have all those boxes of stuff, but... 
a lot of this I found online. So you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I know you can. Okay, a little bit of gold. Yeah. Let's get back to the scrappy part of this. Um, I think maybe... Oops. I don't know. Okay, one trick I really liked watching on other YouTube videos are is this you put the you know you put your embellishment on the on the um on a piece of wax paper and you can really kind of see easier what it's gonna look like versus if it was still on the white sheet. But I don't think that's the right thing. Let's keep looking. So I'm looking for something gold. I do have some of these, but I think this will work just fine. Let's make one long and one short because we have these little banners this way. So maybe we want to go this way with it. So I'm just trying to do some repetition. That's another thing Debbie Hodge talked about when she was on the paper clipping round table this last week. It was like the second episode in uh, February and she was talking about, she's really, you know, she's much more organized than I am. Um, but she was talking about how she's always thinking about emphasis. Is, it's like ekbarf, but some of it is like emphasis, like where do you want your eye to go? And for me, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not so much about emphasis, am I? Because what are you supposed to look at first on either one of these pages? Hmm. My my answer is whatever you want to. <laughs> I'm not gonna like make. I'm not gonna tell you the rules of what you have to look at first. Yeah, I'm crazy like that. Um, <laughs> not crazy. I'm just. I just guess sometimes I feel like such a scatterbrain. And I'm not all the time. It can be, but I'm not. Let's add that in, maybe. I guess just I want to say, whether you're scatterbrained or not, you can do this. Like, if I can do this, you can do this. Seriously. It's not hard. It is not. And it is fun. I mean, I, I guess I look at, sometimes I look at the family history part of it and I'm like, oh, it's so time consuming. And it is, but while you're doing it, it's like so seriously exciting. Um, okay, so the thing that I feel like is missing over here that's over here is I've written on some of the photos like to describe what they were and I don't have any of that over here so I want to write up here Harvey Settlements. So. We know where we're talking about. And then I think I'll be about done with this page. Well, it does say Harvey Settlement on this cemetery, but you'd have to really look. And just for consistency between the two pages for that repetition, I'm going to do some of these letters up here. So I'm going to do that off camera, and then I will be back. I don't really like this though, I gotta say. The placement of this. Let's just try it up here and see if we like it any better. Yeah, they were also, I think Noelle kind of was saying, like, oh, I watch YouTube videos and the, sometimes the person will be like, I don't know where to put this. And it's because they don't know anything about design. And I feel like I do know some stuff about design. But I, yeah, I took Kathy Zulski's class, but um, and the one I get it scrapped. But you still, you know, it, I think it probably comes easier to some than others. I don't like Jack there either. Let's try it here. I don't want to cover up too much of this photo, but I don't like it up there. Let's see. She was like, you should just think about the design rules and then you'll know where everything goes. Yeah, maybe. It's fine.
possible. All right, I'm not loving this because I'm covering up the little cow head. But uh, I don't know. Where does Jack go? I do want to include that he had a nickname. This isn't working either. How about... <laughs> How about I just keep moving it around? I don't like it there either. I think um, even though it wasn't awesome over here, it... Hmm, I just don't know. Let's try it up here. I think, bleh. Okay, how about last time? How about right here? Okay. It's sand. What was the last thing I was going to do? Oh, I was going to write what, what that was. I'll be right back. Hey, scrapbookers. So I'm finished with this page, and I just wanted to show you the finished product. And again, this will be up on my blog, but probably not immediately, like, Probably in a couple of weeks so it's towards the end of February before March I would say um, so these two pages will go together in the book and yeah that's John Henry Grieve and Charlotte Isabella Coburn Grieve Jack and Belle little story about Jack and Belle yeah okay thank you for watching talk to you again